Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas, Neurologist from Rajamandri, Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. My email is sriklpm at gmail.com. Today we are going to talk about a very very interesting topic, the Relative Afferent Pupillary Defect otherwise known as RAPD relative afferent pupillary defect cranial nose part 25 ocular motor nose part 11 as the name suggests it is relative that means you have to compare with the other pupil afferent that means the second nerve is affected and it's a pupillary defect so the name itself is self-explanatory we classically see this relative afferent pupillary defect RAPD in a disease called as multiple sclerosis. So multiple sclerosis is a demyelinating central nervous system disorder. Optic nerve is also a central or a cent is a part of the central nervous system. So multiple sclerosis affects the myelination. So the myelination of the second cranial nerve also gets affected. So it produces optic neuritis and therefore the afferent pathway of the pupillary light reflex gets affected. So, in very early stages, it can be picked up by RAPD, Relative Afferent Pupillary Defect. So, very important sign and can pick up early optic neuritis in persons suffering from multiple sclerosis. So, but what exactly is RAPD or Relative Afferent Pupillary Defect? We all know that the pupillary light reflex, we have two pathways, afferent and efferent. Afferent is the second cranial nerve, the optic nerve. The efferent is the third cranial nerves. So, when we throw light, it goes via the afferent second cranial nerve. It goes to both the edinger westphal nucleus, the third cranial nerves, pupil constrictions. That is the efferent pathway. So, what happens if the afferent pathway, the second nerve gets affected? So, the relative afferent pupillary defect. The weak direct response. The weak direct response. So, when you throw light, for example, if the second cranial nerve is affected on one side when we throw light it is not able to pass sufficiently in the second cranial nerve because of optic neuritis because of demyelination of the optic nerve especially multiple sclerosis so there will be a weak direct response so when we throw light the pupils constrict direct as well as concentrate but it will be weak because the afferent pathway is not well myelinated it is affected so there is a weaker direct response the weaker direct response or the paradoxical dilatation of the light stimulated pupil due to optic nerve disease is termed afferent pupillary defect relative afferent pupillary defect example multiple sclerosis it is due to pathologic pupillary escape and termed as secondary dilatation under continued exposure to due to optic nerve disease so when we throw light there is weaker direct response and concentral response so when we throw light on one side there is a weaker direct and concentral light response the weaker direct light response because the optic nerve or the afferent pathway is affected so there's a weaker constriction weaker direct response so next what we take what we do we take the light and put it on the other eye so the other eye the pupil constricts the efferent is good so now this pupil also constricts but when you come back again to the same eye and start throwing light instead of constriction it is slowly in the phase of dilatation because it has constricted due to concentral light reflex and since the afferent pathway is weak when you throw light directly on the pupil instead of constrict in, instead of contracting it may be in a phase of dilatation we call it as a lag phase it is due to pathologic pupillary escape and termed as secondary dilatation under continued exposure due to optic nerve disease. This will be better understood with the diagram. This is known as swinging flash light test. This is known as swinging flash light test. So now we can see that on one eye the visual acuity is 20 by 20 on the other eye it is only 20 by 200 so the pupil is affected the afferent pathway is affected the second cranial nerve is affected probably demyelinative optic neuropathy due to multiple sclerosis so what is the swinging flashlight test what happens 
So imagine in this picture the right side is affected. The relative afferent pupillary defect. The vision on right is 20 by 20 but vision now we are talking vision on the left side 20 by 200 so we are taking in this example the left optic nerve is affected and the vision is only 20 by 200 because of optic neuropathy so a if you see the pupils in dim light are equal we all know that sympathetic pathway causes dilatation of the pupil sympathetic pathway that is in darkness darkness stimulates sympathetic pathway and causes dilatation of the pupil bright light stimulates the afferent optic nerve and causes pupillary constriction and therefore in the darkness the sympathetic pathway is stimulated and pupils are dilated so the pupils in dim light are equal now what we do we take a torch light and light is stimulated directly into the left eye which is affected which results in partial and sluggish contraction in each eye since the left eye is affected when the light is thrown on the left eye the left pupil also constricts slowly and the right pupil also constricts slowly because the afferent pathway of the second the afferent path of the second cranial now on the left side is affected so there is mild weaker constriction of both light both direct light reflex and concentral light reflex as seen in b next in the third stage that is step c we take the light and put it on the normal eye that is on the right eye so the light is directed onto the right eye results in brisk and normal reaction in each eye so when you throw light on the right eye as you see in the c the right pupil constricts and the left pupil also constricts why because afferent pathway only of the left pupil is affected but the efferent pathway of the left pupil is intact so when you throw light on the right pupil both the right pupil constricts because afferent and efferent pathway on the right is intact and the left pupil also constricts because the efferent pathway of the left pupil is intact so both are now have constricted and now when you are shifting the light back to the left side now they are in the phase of dilatation because we have removed the light source so the light quickly is redirected into the left eye which results in a dilatation of both the pupils instead of constricting because the afferent pathway is affected the swinging light back and forth will bring out the dynamic anisocoria so by swinging the light back and forth will bring out the dynamic anisocoria so in the final step when we throw light instead of constricting it is in the phase of dilatation because it is already constricted when the light is thrown on the opposite side and then when we are taking it to the other side it is in the phase of dilatation and when we throw light it is not constricting it is still in the phase of dilatation because the afferent pathway is affected and therefore it is not able to briskly react to light and constrict so it is still in the face of dilatation so by swinging flash light test we can make out even early stages of optic neuropathy that is the afferent nerve being affected especially multiple sclerosis so the swinging the light swinging the light back and forth will bring out that dynamic anisocoria so this is known as relative afferent pupillary defect characteristically seen in multiple sclerosis so these are the fascinating concepts of relative afferent pupillary defect the other fascinating concepts I have put in a question answer format in a book called Focus Neurology written by me Dr. S. Srinivas. It is available online from all leading booksellers including Amazon. If interested it could be bought online. If you are interested, if you are aware, if you enjoy listening to my lecture, please like, share the link to your friends but please subscribe to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FB page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. Thank you. Bye.